of a name is Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, everyone. Welcome to Talk Story with John Wahe. And I am so pleased today to have as my co-host, Jay Fidel. I am delighted to be here, Governor. He, he actually got your own show. But, well, and, uh, if you I know, was you, I, I that makes it great. great. <laughs> right. But the reason why Jay is joining me is because we got such an important episode this afternoon. Our guest is actually from the Department of Health, and he is there right now. And unfortunately, um, he will be talking to us, you know, via Skype or telephone or something. Skype audio. Skype audio. Well, we have a photograph of him so you can see what he looks like. Right. <laughs> so you can do that now. Before um, we go too much further, uh, Jay, you know, what we're going to talk about today is, uh, I think, a subject that is of concern to a lot of people in Hawaii, uh, especially now when everybody's walking around town asking each other, have you been immunized? Immunized. I can never sound, do that word. Immunized? Immunized. Immunized, okay. immunized for uh, hepatitis C. Uh, Hepatitis, yeah. A, B, yeah. whatever. Yeah, and, and the general consensus is if you haven't been immunized before, you should be now. Uh, we can ask uh, Ron Balahadia about that. Um, and if you have been, you know, uh, do you need do you need to be re-immunized? Well, I, I, I know, I, I, you know, the last person who asked me that says, have you been immunized? And I said, I'm not yet. You know, I want to learn more about it. And hence, uh, actually, kind of today's show, led to today's show. And she said, don't touch me. <laughs> you know, like, stay away from me. <laughs> so I, I want to know. Now, that got me excited. To find out how infectious is it how, really? how is this? I yeah. mean, what is this about? And what should we be concerned about? So today, as you mentioned, we have online with us Aran Balahadia, who is the branch chief uh, for the immunization branch at the Department of Health. Uh, hello, Ron, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ron. Um, you, you're branch chief of the immunization branch at the Department of Health. And I was told that you're a proud graduate of our uh, University of Hawaii. Is that uh, <laughs> yes. a good beginning? Well, tell us how, how you get to be branch chief. <laughs> well, um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I am the immunization branch chief here at the Hawaii Department of Health. and I actually have a master's degree in microbiology from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And prior to that, I actually got my undergraduate, my bachelor's uh, in biochemistry at the University of Arizona. I'm an, I'm an actual native or, um, from the island of Guam and went to school and decided to make Hawaii my home. And I basically after I graduated at the University of Hawaii with my master's, I went back to Guam and I was the immunization, uh, basically program manager there for 10 years. After that, I decided I wanted to still continue, in, continue on with immunizations, but then I decided that I wanted to work for a bigger group. So I decided to work for the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, oh. Everybody knows and I've heard the CDC, and so I was a contractual employee for them as a immunization liaison for the U.S. Associated Pacific Islands. So I lived here and was stationed here in Hawaii, but I was able to go to Palau, to Guam, to the Northern Mariana so Islands. all to over the, the Pacific dealing with uh, various types of communicable, I guess, diseases, something that well, spe say. Yeah, specifically vaccine-preventable diseases. So these are the diseases that have a vaccine associated with it, that if you are vaccinated, that you can prevent from getting these diseases. So, so if, yes, you, if you I tell work there's no that. vaccine, then, then uh, you don't care. Mm -hmm. You don't want to help. Is that it? You're mm -hmm. not involved unless there's a vaccine that can prevent it? In your, in yes, your exactly. Defense. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, Specifically, I wanted to talk to you today about hepatitis. You know, I, I okay. looked it up and I found out that there are all kinds of hepatitis. I mean, there a it's like all A, B, C, D, E, and there's hepatitis that comes from alcohol, hepatitis that's spread by, uh, spread by contact. Okay. There are viral hepatitis. There are biological. What, what 
tell me a little bit about what I'm talking about. Okay, so hepatitis, the word hepatitis actually means inflammation of the liver. And the actual diseases that we're going to be talking about today are what we call the viral hepatitis um, series. So you have A, B, C, D, and E. And of those five viral hepatitis um, that, um, that I just mentioned, uh, two of them are, and actually m most people hear about hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Those are the normal three that everybody hears about. Now, of those three, two of them are what we call vaccine preventable. What we mean by that is that we actually have vaccines that can be vaccinated or injected to an individual so that they don't come down with these two diseases of hepatitis A or B. We do not have a vaccine for hepatitis C um, at this point in time, but A and B are the only two that we currently have of the five that I just mentioned. Which is the uh, hepatitis where you can take um, a drug after you get it and be cured, but the cost of the drug is hundreds of thousands? Which is that so, one? Hepatitis C um, yeah. is what you're um, referring to, um, where there's medication for that um, for that particular. But because it's not vaccine preventable, I really don't have a lot of um, uh, expertise in that particular area. But it is one of the five um, viral hepatitis that's out there. Yeah. You know, what what causes what causes uh, hepatitis? For, uh, A, for example. So these are. The, the five that we're talking about are viral hepatitis, meaning there's a virus that causes the disease. So for hepatitis A, it's uh, caused by hepatitis A virus, hepatitis B, hepatitis B virus, etc. cetera. So um, these particular viruses um, invade and or uh, cause inflammation of the liver. And that really there's various routes and or ways that these viruses can um, make people sick. And so with the current outbreak that we are experiencing right now with hepatitis A, it's what we call fecal oral transmission. So you wait, wait, take wait, the wait, poop wait. What, what, what do we call it? Fecal oral fecal transmission. Fecal oral transmission, yes. That means and somebody's so what, eating something nasty. Well, that somebody didn't wash appropriately their hands and happen to be preparing some type of either food or drink or something that they've touched and then the individual then ingested that virus through um, some means and so um, that's why it's one of the most important things in our website that we say for people to try to protect themselves besides being vaccinated is to wash their hands thoroughly especially after using the bathroom is when you change children's diapers, um, when you're trying to prepare food for other people yourself, you always want to make sure that you um, constantly are washing your hands really, really well. You, are you including the scallops issue with that? Because that had nothing to do with fecal. Well, the, the people have ingested that virus, and then that means what's... And so we don't really know specifically about um, the scallops and how the virus actually was attached or um, contained in that product. Um, what we do know is that that virus was found to be in the product itself. How it got there, we, we really don't know. So where, if, since we got on that subject, where, um, what is the origin of, uh, or what is your prognosis regarding the origin of that uh, virus? So there's, I mean, the, I don't have that detailed information on that. So it's still right now currently being investigated, and we're really trying to find out a little bit more details of that. Uh, as you are all aware, well aware, this process is a lengthy process that we, we have to go through, and we really have to work with our partners, the FDA with CDC, including ourselves, in really trying to do the investigation on this, because we really want to make sure if we are able to identify that we identify correctly and not misidentify right. things. Let me, can I throw something in here? Sure. You know, we had we had two, essentially two rounds of Hepe, Hepe in the last few weeks. One was at a restaurant, another, not, not, the, not the sushi place, at another restaurant, and the uh, implication of the news story was that workers had not washed. And, well, not and washed were, their, not washed their hands when they and, touched. And they touched the food. Yeah. And, that, and that the implication was that that was a fecal 
kind of uh, vector. Um, but then when you get to the, um, uh, the one most recently, which had a lot of cases, uh, that, that was uh, about scallops. Yeah, uh, yeah, it that's was not the, fecal. Uh, 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 or, or, it's, or it was not fecal at that time. So, yeah. So, what's the distinction there? I, I can see the washing hands situation. Uh, how does, how does uh, the scallops get to carry this? Uh, 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 not necessarily. You know, John, it could be that the scallops were not washing their hands. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You know, it could very well be. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, but how, I, I just, uh, it must mean that there's somewhere along the line where somebody didn't comply with some kind of uh, regulation. Uh, yeah, and, and again, we don't know the details of that. Um, again, we're looking, trying to look back in time of what may have happened. And again, because it is currently still being investigated, we really don't have a clue right now as to what is the actual answer for that particular question. But it's something that is being looked at. Well, here, here's, here's, my, here's my concern about it. You get this, the one with uh, where washing hands was at least implied in the news that it right. was the source. They get another one, and, and they, they say that it was the scallops, and that means that yeah, the scallops so, were the there, source. Are there any more sources out but, there? But the strange thing is that both of these happen in fairly close proximity, you know, in, you know within a week or two of each other, maybe three, um, and, and it's an outbreak now, but it's two separate kinds of vectors. Yeah. Isn't it, that's an incredible coincidence, isn't it? What do you say to well, that, Ron? Just, so just to clarify, the prior to... Yankee sushi that was um, identified um, in the um, press release, all the other uh, establishments that were, um, that were announced, they just happened to have an, um, an employee that came down with <coughs> disease. So that individual could have eaten someplace like Yankee and got sick, but the product itself that they were at, that, uh, and the product that, um, that was being sold at where they were at, is not the actual source of the actual <coughs> outbreak. So, so the, the, there's so a very clear distinction between an individual getting sick because they ate something and just happened to be a worker at a at a at an establishment <coughs> or at a place that serves. So, it, and then how their proper hygienic type of um, conditions and or um, practices. That's a whole another. Question right, to, so it's to, possible. You know. It's possible that the scallops got the virus from somebody locally, from somebody working here that was working in there, as well as giving it. To or, or the else. people at the other restaurant, right. the first restaurant, got the the same virus from the scallops, and then they transferred they, they, they transferred that so around. So how 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 extensive I mean how you know communicable uh, is this uh, hep like hepatitis A at the moment is that is that something that tr travels easily from person to person So it it's not it, it is infectious but it doesn't um, travel as easily it's not like measles or pertussis that are you cough it out, it becomes airborne, and then people that breathe in that air can then get sick. So it's not that easily transmissible like those other diseases, but it can. It's it not just the takes measles, around. in other words. You've actually sorry? got it. It's not like the measles or something. It's not like measles, exactly. So um, with measles, you can actually be in a room, cough if you are sick, and then leave the room and three hours later if somebody happened to come in and breathe in that same air and they haven't been vaccinated or protected against measles, they can actually come down with the disease. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same as in um, with hepatitis A. In hepatitis A, you have to ingest that material that has been tainted or um, exposed to the hepatitis A virus. Okay, Ron, we're going to take a short break right now. And uh, for, before we do, I want to tell our listeners that they can call us at 415-871-2474. So that's 415-871-2474. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back to talk with Ron about what we can do about protecting ourselves and our families and, even, and helping the Department of Health uh, contain this, uh, this disease. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. 
I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday here on ThinkTech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kauilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Hibachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Welcome back, everybody, to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. And today we have a most interesting subject. We're discussing hepatitis, hepatitis A in particular, and perhaps uh, we'll get on to some of the other hepatitis. But if any of you, uh, like me, are curious about this subject, well, like me and Jay, please call in at 415-871-2474. Ron, we are talking to Ron Balahadia, who is the branch chief at the immunization branch at the um, department, the Hawaii State Department of Health. So, Ron, we, we talked about what, uh, how the disease is carried and it's virus-based and, and, uh, and actually has a lot to do with uh, hygiene, how we keep ourselves. Now, since there is an outbreak out there, uh, tell us how we can get immunized. Immunize. I'm, I'm having a terrible time with that. You've got to ask that question, Jay, because you can pronounce the word. You know? uh, well, Ron, you can too. You know what I mean. So go ahead and just yes, go I, for it. I, I definitely know what you mean, yes. In order to get immunized, uh, and we're lucky that this particular virus we do have a vaccine for, and as I mentioned previously, we also have it for hepatitis B. But for hepatitis A, the vaccinations, um, it was actually licensed around 1995, and it was only for those states or areas that ha had high rates of hepatitis A going on in the community. But in 2006, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, which is the body um, working collaboratively with CDC, the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia, that comes up with the recommendations for vaccinations, made it and expanded the recommendations to include routine vaccinations of children. And so we were getting, we're getting definitely a lot of our children since 2006 vaccinated. It's, it's done in the doctor's offices um, and or for especially for the children um, are being vaccinated there for this particular outbreak that we're experiencing uh, we are also and have expanded and areas that have been vaccinating have been our pharmacy um, uh, collaborators and they have been uh, making sure that there's enough vaccine and people are able to access the vaccine is there enough if vaccine, they need to access. Ron? is there, is there, there is definitely there is definitely enough vaccine. Um, when the outbreak started out, we actually communicated with our pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies to say, this is ongoing right now, and are there vaccines available? And they said yes, and they actually helped to redirect some of those vaccines over to Hawaii. So, Ron, and so what, how, what do I do? I, I go to, you know, I, I want to be vaccinated. And so what do I do? I go, I go and see my doctor and just tell him, I, Doc, I, I need a prescription. Uh, or does he check me out? Does he do something to me or, you know, make sure that I'm eligible or, or how, how do we do it? Yeah, exactly. So if you're interested, I mean, if, and especially if you have a primary care provider, your own doctor, go to your doctor and let them know saying, you know what, there's, there's this outbreak that's going on and I'm really interested in wanting to be vaccinated. Uh, and the other thing with that is besides the outbreak, if you do a lot of traveling to international places, to different countries, they also have hepatitis A in, their, in, in some of those other countries. It's really good to make sure you get vaccinated, especially if you like to eat a lot of different foods um, out when you're traveling. 
Um, but go to your doctor, talk to them, ask them, and let them know. And, and basically have that conversation with your, with your doctor. A lot of your doc, um, doctor's offices may not carry the vaccine readily in their refrigerators. So what they may do is refer you out to a pharmacy with a doctor's prescription to make sure, you know, but that I, it's I everything is... I do need a doctor's prescription. I, I can't just go to, uh, say, Long's or... Um, <clears throat> and and walk in there and say, uh, you know, I'd like to be vaccinated. I, I, I have to go and see a doctor for a prescription. Now that raises so right an interesting now. question, that you, you do have to do that. Yeah. You have to get a prescription, but why? Yeah. Um, you know, for example, if you have a flu shot, you know, you, you can go down to any, uh, any drugstore and get it. Right. Um, you don't have to have a prescription. Nobody has to look you over. You just get the flu shot. Why, why do you require a prescription? Shouldn't that rule be changed, Ron? Well, the, the issue or the big thing that is of concern, or at least at this point in time, is insurance coverage on what insurance plan that you have and are they going to cover your vaccinations. Um, and so that's the question that a lot of pharmacies are encountering. And so it really, there's, a, there's several things that are ongoing at this point in time when an individual wants to get vaccinated. And some of the pharmacies will require that you actually contact and get a prescription um, prior to coming to them. So one of the things that I would do um, normally is on the Department of Health's website, we have a list of uh, available pharmacies and what we ask people to do is either call your doctor directly or call the pharmacy, but you have to talk to someone and you have to explain your situation of what it is. Either you're an actual contact to an individual that came down with disease and that now you need to be vaccinated or that you're just interested party and that you want to get vaccinated. Based on the scenario, they will then try to fit and make that determination of whether you so need this a... So this uh, is an insurance issue. Uh, uh, it's more so in than addition, health. In addition to other things. I mean, there's just not one thing, but just to make sure that you are covered or else you're, you may have to pay out of pocket. What's the cost so, out of pocket? Yeah, really. What, if you, if so I don't that, have insurance, what, does it, what would it cost me? So it varies from some places as low as around 69 to $70 to upwards of 130 to $140. Okay. Um, per shot. So again, it would vary depending on which. But if with a doctor's um, prescription, then the the the, the normal coverage uh, insurance coverage would attach. Is that what we're normally saying? you would just pay your um, co-payment or whatever payment or no payment at all because it's a covered entity. Now the, I I heard that the thing about these uh, vaccinations is that you need to do it more than once. There's, yes, there's two doses. Okay, why? And so the main thing is is that the, the vaccine and, um, and the studies really that have been um, determining why there is two doses. So the first dose is actually a very good dose. It actually provides upwards of close to 90 some percent protectiveness, but that's not 100%. There's nothing that's 100%. And the studies have shown that if you give the second dose six months after the first dose, then you um, really are gonna be protected for upwards of over 25 years. And again, the reason for that is right now, when the vaccine came out in 1995, we can't really say a lifetime, but we know that for the body to respond appropriately, that it looks like it is. And as, as, the, as time goes on, we'll, de we'll be able to, with the studies that are gonna be done, determine the length of time of protectiveness for these vaccines. But at, at this point in time, with two doses, it looks upwards of over 20 years of protection. And so, uh, Jay asked you a question during our break, which uh, I, I really would like to follow up on. And that is that if, we, if I get a, vaccin a vaccination for hepatitis A, does that protect me for, uh, from any, the virus for hepatitis B? And no, it does not, because hepatitis A is very specific and is very different from hepatitis B and C and D and E. So um, it's really important that, it, and most of our, our people, um, and actually a lot of our children, have received our hepatitis B vaccine, because a lot of that is given right after birth What's in the, the hospital What's the difference? Setting. I mean, really, for, for a layman sitting here, I, I have no idea what, what specifically, or, or quickly, can, what is the difference between 
the uh, vaccination for hepatitis A and hepatitis B? I mean, why, why, why do we need two different kinds? Well, because they're two different viruses. They're two different viruses that affect the body differently and make people sick. So hepatitis A will make you sick, and it, but it doesn't protect you if you've been, you know, if you had that disease, then now you're not going to get hepatitis, you're not um, susceptible to hepatitis B. So it's very unique. It's like talking about measles and rubella. They're two different okay. Um, okay. Um, organisms. Do we have hepatitis B going on these days? Do you have any cases in the state of hepatitis B <laughs> right now? Well, we have with hepatitis B, um, the biggest thing is, is that we, we, we have a program where we're vaccinating all children that are born at the hospital with that particular vaccine. So a lot of our children actually since 1990 here in the state of Hawaii are were vaccinated. Than we are. <laughs> yes. So, well, years. and then other, yeah. and then other people that may have been that afterwards, um, um, their doctor recommended them to get hepatitis B vaccine. But we have a huge cohort of individuals that have been vaccinated against hepatitis B, and our numbers have dropped dramatically since back in that time frame till now. And we don't see as many hepatitis B in children because of the vaccination program. And so what we're seeing is an un, un, in unvaccinated adults that may not have been given the vaccine or protected against that vaccine. Um, the other difference between the two is with hepatitis B, you can have what we call a carrier status where an individual can continuously provide, um, um, expose other individuals to hepatitis but B. But not have any symptoms. Where yeah, where hepatitis A, once you've resolved the disease, you will not have a carrier status, and it's all pow, it's all done. But with hepatitis B, we have to make sure we educate people on the possibility of transmission talking if they are what we consider a carrier. Talking about educating people, Ron, tell us about your website, just uh, if you don't mind. And so in addition to having people view this program, uh, they can go and look at look up on your website uh, what they need to know. Is, is that yes? Go correct? definitely go to healthhawaii.gov and on there we have a banner that talks about um, hepatitis, um, the outbreak that is co uh, currently going on. There's a lot of information there. There's posters. There's information. What is um, that on again? Uh, health. What, give me the site again. It's health.hawaii.gov. Health.hawaii.gov, so they can get yep. all the information they need from there. Ron, our time is up. Wait, before we before we close, I just want to hit two policy points real quick. Okay. Number one, when I get out when I get out of this discussion, is that there's an inefficiency going on um, with the requirement to go to see a doctor about what is really right. Necessary. Absolutely. And and I think the Department of Health could change that rule. I think the legislature ought to do it as well. You know, yeah. it's an insurance problem. Yeah, it's an insurance problem, and HMSA should pay for it uh, instead of having to pay for a doctor plus the vaccine. Absolutely. And so that's a waste. For everything. Yeah. The other thing I get, just to add this last point, is that we have the homeless. And the homeless, by definition, don't do a lot of hygiene. They don't have bathrooms. They don't have to time. Do hygiene. They don't, yeah. have, they don't have the Facilities. opportunity. And, and, I, and they don't have health insurance either. They don't have access to Yeah, what's happening? Care. Real quick, I'm going to stretch our time. Ron, what's happening with the homeless on this issue? So the current cases that we're seeing, we're not seeing it in that population. Um, and that's a lot of oh, our maybe. investigations are currently going on. Um, and based on scallops. the cases that we're seeing, it's not heading into those particular niches. Um, and so the individuals that we are working with currently um, is basically trying to identify all the possible contexts that these individuals may have been involved in. You may not see these individuals eating at the various establishments that have already been um, named or identified. Okay, great. Well, Ron, we want to thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And again, you know, we, I think this is a, for people listening, this is a very important issue. I think the if there are any legislators listening now or in the future, pay attention to the fact that we're actually raising health costs by insisting that people go to get a prescription as well as uh, paying for a vaccination. So, and finally, again, um, learn more about this. Go to the Department of Health website. Thank you, Ron, and uh, keep healthy, everybody. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you.